What's going on, you guys? It's Coach Ike. And today, I'm going to be talking about the four types of DBs that I've seen um, being a player, coach, and a trainer now. Um, this is my terminology. This is how I'm communicating it. But I'm going to break it down for um, each one. So let's get into it. Number one. We got the hard worker. So what do I mean by the hard worker? Uh, most of my career, I think I would consider myself a hard worker um, as far as from youth all the way to my beginning of my professional career. And what the hard worker does, they work extremely hard, which is not a bad thing, okay, fellas? It's good to work hard. But at the same time, it's not, it's not on the specific thing. So it doesn't yield you the actual um, result that you always want. Working hard at just broad things. Yes, I was eight, I was making plays. Yes, I'm doing these things. But at the same time, it's not maximizing the thing that I really want to see. I really wasn't maximizing. If I wanted, if I shot for a certain amount of interceptions, I wasn't even working on that because I was working hard at so many things. And I can tell you for myself, as I got older, my professional level, I was working hard so much that I would compromise my body because I'm putting in so much work and I'm not really being efficient with my body and those types of things. So the hard worker works hard at everything and really doesn't focus in on anything, making plays by not really uh, maximizing their ability um, and what they can possibly do. So that's what the hard worker is. Number two, we got the physically gifted, okay? The physically gifted, and this is more so now being as a coach. Um, you see these guys, they were the bigger kid. They had a growth spurt prior to um, them get into high school, and they were so much better than everybody else. Then when they get to high school, uh, everybody is caught up to them. They no longer have that advantage that they had when they was in youth. Um, and then you have some guys who are just God-given ability. They have the genes. They have the speed. They have um, all the intangibles that you can't necessarily get. Um, it's just God-given. But with these guys, they settle so much because physically they have an advantage in everybody else and they don't try to really master it. They just settle at where they're at. And you can get upset for guys who, for them so easily because if they put it all together, it would be like an awesome combination. It can be something very special. But they are just so, um, not the better word, lazy, because they put the work in. It's just, it's not to the full capacity that they really can do. Like, if they put the, the, the athleticism, the natural athleticism, and really put it together, they can be something special. They can truly dominate. But they're okay with being um, just good enough where they're the best in their area where they really should be the best in the nation. Um, so those are the physically gifted guys. And, you know, you get upset when they really don't buy in and put the work in. Number three. You got the false confidence. These guys, there's a lot of false confidence DBs out here. And when I think about false confidence, what comes to my mind is the seven on seven guys. Um, you know, they're making a lot of noise, rah, rah. First of all, you're not in pads. But these guys, they make more plays than the average DB does. Um, the thing is, though, they have so many bad habits. And they're making these plays that they don't want to listen to any coaching or anything. And at the same time, if you look at the big picture, the reason why they make the plays, um, you know, quarterback made a, a bad read. They were in a bad position and just happened 
to be in the area. Um, all of these things happen because when the Quakes, they see, oh, I made the interception or I made the background, whatever it is, where you really shouldn't have been there. You really were beat, but because the D-line got there, got some pressure in their face, the ball was just thrown up in the air. So they have this false confidence where even when they go work out, they aren't even trying to get better and these bad habits continue, continue now when they actually play against some competition, play against guys and move up to the next level where everybody for the most part is uh, more equal. Now they're having trouble. And the reason why they're having trouble, they never had a baseline or a standard of what it looks like. They, when they look at film, they're like, man, I'm doing the exact same thing I've always been doing. And that's the problem. Now they don't know how to correct how they're getting beat. They don't understand what's going on or how to fix the issue. And then as this is happening, their confidence starts to go down and playing DP, you know you got to have confidence, especially at that corner position, okay? Now, another reason why this happens, and I say this to my kids all the time, high school, college, NFL, as far as skilled players, yes, guys will get faster, stronger, you'll start playing against better competition. The thing that really changes is the quarterback. The quarterback throws the ball on time, understands coverages, all these things, so the ball is coming out. So the margin of error is much smaller the higher you go. So now, if as a DB, you have to have those nuances, those details, and your error has to be so much smaller as you get higher, but they have so many bad habits, the false confidence DBs, that uh, you know it never builds up, and hopefully they can get out their own way to get better and do the things that require them to change their their ways. So that's your number three false confidence. Then you have your nonchalant guy. Uh, I remember, I remember uh, my second or last year playing professional, playing arena football that had more veterans on the team. When I saw... We had one veteran. He was the leader in interceptions in, like, arena in the history. And I saw how he worked. And when I saw that he worked less than me and made more plays, and I figured out and I talked to him about it, and I realized, man, let me start implementing these things. It was night and day, complete night and day. And the nonchalant, these guys understand the full picture. They understand where they need to be. They understand football IQ. They use less of their body and more of their mental. They understand, and the reason why they're not is because they understand where they need to be and when they need to be. And they also can make everything look alike, which now it changes up how much I had to work when I understood and implemented these things. And when I think about nonchalant, I also think about guys like Darrell Reeves and Stephon Gilmore. When you talk to them, they can tell you exactly what it was that got them beat if it happened, and they can tell you what they need to do better next time. Everything is so strategic, and they work on the things that they know is going to help them produce at a high level. Um, you do not need to be – I know I named Darrell Reeves and Stephon Gilmore. I think Dyer Alexander is a very – uh, he falls in this category. They have different personalities. It has nothing to do with the personality. It's just the way I'm communicating, but at the same time, how they see the game and understand it, and they go about their work. So when it comes to the four types of DBs, this is how I see it. You have your hard worker, your physically gifted, false confidence, and nonchalant. I actually have a quiz for DBs to assess what kind of DB you are. You guys make sure you guys check it out. It will be the link under this video. You guys, it's Coach Ike. I have a good one.